Hello, this is a short discussion on indigenous slavery. Anthropological studies show that slavery in the Western Hemisphere existed among all Indian tribes. In Canada, from coast to coast, indigenous people enslaved other indigenous people. Some of the best records of this tradition are those concerning Northwest Coast Indians. Anthropologists Scholar Leland Donald argues that slavery was essential to Northwest Coast culture. Regarded as property, indigenous slaves were used in the labor intensive work of coastal societies, building boats, houses, and weirs, preparing food, carrying water, collecting firewood, and nursing children. The main source of slaves came from raiding parties, but some slaves were bought and sold after the fashion of dogs and horses. The transaction was money shells, blankets, food, or other property. From his 1838 census of Northwest Coast Indians, James Douglas of the Hudson's Bay Company calculated that the percentage of slaves in several tribes was in the range of four to six percent. Surveys of Puget Sound Indians indicate that indigenous slaves also constituted between four and six percent of the native population. These numbers correspond with 1845 population surveys of the British Army showing that there was one slave for every 17 Indians in Hudson Bay Company territory west of the Rocky Mountains. The British in the Northwest took a clear stand against Indians enslaving other Indians. In London, Parliament abolished the British slave trade in 1807 and ended all slavery throughout the empire 26 years later. After 1833, the British Foreign Office sought to rid the world of this deviant practice. James Douglas believed that the slave trade could be suppressed by moral influence. Christian missionaries played a major role in fighting slavery. Missionaries preached the equality of souls, giving their presence and reach to many communities throughout the region, their influence was significant. Hudson Bay Company policy fought slavery by adopting three approaches. Denounce slavery as illegal, protect runaway slaves, and stipulate that all individuals residing in a Hudson Bay Company fort were British subjects with absolute and legal rights. Although the Hudson Bay Company could not physically force tribes to end slavery, it could make it clear to Indian chiefs that the immoral system was displeasing in the eyes of British law. On the seas, Royal Navy officers had the task of freeing slaves and their main strategy was to stop endemic intertribal warfare. Less tribal warfare meant a reduction in slave trading and slave taking. The Navy extracted promises from indigenous leaders to cease to take or hold slaves. Sometimes they took direct action. Canadian historian Barry Gow explains that when Navy patrols sailed to the Queen Charlotte Islands, the Nass River area, and elsewhere, slaves or captives were freed, given protection, and returned to their home tribes. Natives benefited when they obeyed colonial laws rather than continuing their cultural ways of enslaving other indigenous people. As governor of the colonies of Vancouver Island and British Columbia, James Douglas redoubled his effort to see the abolition of slavery and the security of the region. The message was clear from the British warships. The British hated slavery and where the British flag flew, slavery would not be tolerated. Each tribe received assurances that no tribe would have preferential treatment all work to stop slavery. According to Barry Gow, the various Indian chiefs seem to have been more concerned with economic realities and the social consequences of their situation than with the moral implication of slavery as perceived by the British. Nonetheless, they seem to have agreed to the terms presented. Thus, gunboat diplomacy on this maritime frontier worked to reduce interesting 
tensions and violence and serve to weaken the ancient slaving tradition. When British Columbia became a Canadian province in 1871, there was strong opposition to Indian slavery. The advantages for Indigenous people were the end of fighting and the development of better relations with the government. With increased white settlement, the demand for law and order, and the work of missionaries and humanitarians, the native tradition of slavery became unacceptable. Thank you.